What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 video. Series 8 is coming to a close soon and I can't wait. I just want to play Series 7 rules again. I'm getting a little bit bored of Series 8, which is a contributor as to why I haven't seen too many videos lately. On top of that, school's wrapping up. Been a very stressful year. I'm almost done with it though. So uh, that's those two things contributed to a slowdown in videos. But yeah. If you guys enjoyed this standpoint in time, do me a favor, leave a like and hit subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content. And answer my comment question of the day, why hasn't Surfetch been used more in Series 7 and what is going to be Series 9, I guess, for those rule sets? Why do you think Surfetch is so underwhelming there? I don't know. I'm using it in today's video in Series 8, so it's going to be even more underwhelming, but <laughs> let's go ahead and get into it. Also, tonight at 5 p.m., I will be going live on my Twitch channel. I have been streaming there pretty consistently on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, so be sure to check me out there. I'm going to be using this team. But yeah, let's get into it. Uh, this team has been okay. It's been okay. You know, it's it's not very consistent, but when Surfetched works, it definitely works. It's more leaning on Charizard's Sun offense, though, I have to be honest, but hopefully we can get some things going with it today. Yeah, school's been pretty stressful. Uh, I've been, like, you know, everything's via Zoom, so it's like, okay, I can show up to class, I can pay attention, take notes, but also it's like I really wish I had people with me there to, like, work on stuff with. I don't know. Like, it, I'm, I'm a physics major, right? So I'll learn things from Zoom lectures and stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll understand. But just that, like, one-on-one -on -one contact, it definitely helps with understanding the concepts, but... You know, it's whatever. <laughs> okay, so our rating's pretty bad if you didn't notice, but we're facing a pretty cool team. Uh, Whimsicott plus Cinderace on uh, pretty standard Calyrex Shadow Hyper Offense. Uh, we're definitely going to need our screens for this matchup, and I'm somewhat tempted just to lead off Groudon. However, the Cinderace could be an issue. I have had issues at Cinderace in the past because of the sun being up, uh, but I think by leading off Groudon, we can circumvent those things quite a bit. Uh, in the back here, I feel pretty comfortable bringing Charizard, and, hmm, let me think. I could actually lead off Grim, uh, Grimmsnarl Charizard and bring Groudon in the back, and that wouldn't be awful. I might do that, actually. And I think my last Pokemon is, this is definitely not a Surf-Edged game. The Psychic Spam is a little bit too strong. Uh, I'm definitely going to have to bring Porygon, too. Not only because it's a uh, pretty specially defensive Pokemon, especially with screens up, uh, but the fact that being a normal type means it's going to be immune to Astral Barrage, which is a really scary move. Alright, as they lead off Regieleki and Calyrex Shadow, um, this seems like a pretty free light screen. However, I am going to have to go into my Porygon, I believe. Yeah, the last thing I want to do here is lose my Charizard this early. So we'll go for the light screen, and I'll get him Porygon to eat a hit. I could go Charizard, or not Charizard, I could go Groudon, because I'm very specially defensive, and they might just, you know, go for a Thunderbolt into a Astral Barrage or something, but uh, I'd much rather just get in the Porygon and have a little bit more flexibility with what I do in the coming turns, whether I set up a Trick Room or uh, just go for the offense with Groudon. Or even just go for an Eerie Impulse. To get my download boost, it is an attack raise, which is not usable here, but it's whatever. They end up Dynamaxing. Uh, I'm going to assume that they went for the max Psychic move into my Charizard since it catches the Porygon switch in as well. As they Dynamax the Regieleki in, wow, that's actually terrifying. I really hope I'm not, <laughs> not going to have to deal with fake tears or anything. Hopefully an Astro Barrage is what they clicked here. As I get my light screen off, I prefer an Astro Barrage above anything else. There's the Max Darkness. Into the P2, so good call by them. Good call by them there. So they take some Life Orb damage, and there's the Astro Barrage. Alright, so I want to assume here they want to knock out the P2, 
So I can do something kind of crazy. I'm going to go for a Spirit Break here into the Regieleki. And assuming they want to knock out the P2, their best play would be to go for an Expanding Force on top of a Max Lightning. So I'm actually going to switch in this Groudon here. Like I said, it's really specially defensive, and if I do call that Max Lightning, that's going to be incredible for me. As they get in the Urshifu Rapid Strike. I thought it was Single Strike, but that doesn't matter too much. All right, let's hope that I catch a uh, Max Lightning here. Nice. Okay, that was actually really solid. And I get a Spirit Break off, ensuring that this Regieleki isn't doing too much damage now. And I think here, it's in my best interest just to T-Wave this Urshifu. I could Spirit Break the, um, the Regieleki again, but I don't really feel like it. Or I could even just get in P2 again. I might just get in P2 again since it shouldn't be too difficult to deal with this thing. Um, or maybe I don't. I think I Thunder Wave this thing. And I might just Dynamax and get rid of this. Yeah, I'm just going to get rid of the um, Urshifu if possible. I don't really mind Regieleki much. Not at this point. So the reason I'm prioritizing Urshifu is because Urshifu is one of the few Pokemon that actually really threatens Porygon too, and I'd rather just get rid of it entirely. Uh, I'm going for a Thunder Wave into a Max Quake here because I don't know if Max Quake would just straight up KO the Urshifu. I'm not certain with Groudon. Uh, however, I'd much rather avoid as much damage as possible in case they decide to go for a Surging Strikes or something. And granted, I am Dynamaxed and a Groudon in the sun, so it wouldn't do too much damage, but I'd rather avoid all of it if possible. I don't think losing Grimmsnarl is too terrible of a trade. Not at this point in the match. As we don't pick up a KO, but a uh, full Paro would be really nice here. As they go for the Surging Strikes, it's not going to do much. However, this animation is going to waste quite a bit of my time. <laughs> okay. So, I should be able just to get in P2 here. In Trick Room, I... With a light screen up, there's no way they can stop this. I'm just going to max Quake and Trick Room. I guess maybe a Rising Voltage could be annoying, but... I don't think they're carrying that. Actually, they might be. That could be a really scary <laughs> thing to think about here, but... Um, with light screen up, I think I'm still fine. Max Quake into you. I definitely need to practice Pokemon more. Like, I'm a Pokemon channel, right? And I've been playing for years, but with uh, everything keeping me so busy, sometimes I feel like I'm out of the loop on occasion, you know? And then I'll play in a tournament and I'll do okay, and I'm like, all right, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> As they go for a bounce. Interesting, uh, physical Regieleki. Anyways, I didn't name for it, so <laughs> who cares? As we, guess, as we get a very, very nice uh, special defense boost on our Porygon 2. And I think we're pretty set to win here. We, I mean, every time I say that, I throw. But I feel like it's very hard to throw in this position. But don't underestimate me. I can throw whenever I want. I'm assuming either Ndidi or Calyrex is going to come out here. Oh, Cinderace, okay. Um, I can just get rid of this thing. I don't want to deal with Cinderace for the rest of this match. So I'll just double into it. Uh, I'll go for the Tri-Attack into you. As well as a Max Quake. Even if they Sucker Punch, they're still going to get KO'd by this combination of moves. If they go for a Protect, it's whatever. I just want to make sure I'm not going to get High Jump kicked on my P2. Because P2 is really important for the endgame. 
as we just annihilate one of the most annoying Pokemon in the game. <laughs> Alright, and Regieleki should very awkwardly be doing about 30% to anything at max here. Yeah, even less, but... Ooh, the paralysis is a little bit annoying. I've never seen a Regieleki get a paralysis, let alone... Like, I get that, like, electric moves paralyze, but I've never actually seen it, surprisingly. Uh, I've never seen a Regieleki paralyze anything, let alone doing it with bounce, you know? Alright, uh, I think my play is always just going to be to KO this Regieleki here. Or maybe I should just Eerie Impulse and Presbus Blades. It doesn't really matter what I go for as long as I connect one of these two P-Blades. Uh, but I definitely prefer to Eerie Impulse this uh, Calyrex Shadow. Like an Astro Barrage does a ton. they go for an extreme speed that's pretty funny it's not going to do too much wow Regin Lucky actually has some pretty decent damage output with the life orb it's got base 100 attack right so I don't know I didn't expect it to do that much as I connect both of my P blades that's likely just going to be game they'd have to crit a Astro Barrage to win here I'm going to guess it's going to do about 10 to 15 percent to grout on yeah that was like five percent <laughs> okay uh, i can just click fire punch and i'm good uh, i might as well just get in the charizard for a little flex here and uh fire punch to wrap things up as they forfeit nice Okay, thank you for the pearl string. I will keep it near and dear to my heart. Let's get another one. This might be a little bit of a shorter video. I might just do two battles. I want to bring the Surfetched. By the end of this video, I want to bring the Surfetched. That's my one thing. But I have a class to catch in a half hour, so I'd prefer to finish this up by then. Yeah, you might be asking, what does Surfetch do on this team? And it is quite literally just something to catch Incineroar on lead. And to an extent, it can deal with Tornogre. To a very, very limited extent, it can do that, but <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> Alright, uh, this is Weakness Policy Yveltal. And there's very, very little reason to bring the Surfetched, but... I don't mind if I throw just for this one game, you know? I feel pretty confident leading off Grim Snarl Surfetched won't end in complete tragedy. Just slight tragedy, you know? Uh, I'll bring the Grout on here, and I think it's in my best interest to... I want to say Venusaur. I want to say Venusaur is a really smart investment of a Pokemon slot here, but uh, Charizard's also kind of calling my name. I want to bring Charizard here. Safety Goggles Charizard could really mess them up. I just want to point out how good Safety Goggles Charizard is. One of the main issues with Charizard teams is having to deal with Sleep Powder from Venusaur. If you just get rid of that entirely, you're set. Like, that's fine. <laughs> the matchup just 100% gets fixed. And Charizard itself can disassemble opposing Sun teams on its own, given the proper support. I would argue one of Sun's greatest counters is a more prepared Sun team. So what's my game plan here? Uh, I'm going to lead off with the Surfetched, and I'm going to Light Screen, and I'm going to Max Airstream, and hope that each and every one of these Max Airstreams crits, and that's how I'm going to play this game. And if there's a Venusaur on lead, I am switching in the Charizard. <laughs> Alright, how do you lead, sir? What is, what is the lead you choose today? Don't let it be Venusaur. Eveltal Comfey. Okay, so remember how I said everything's going to be fine? Might have lied a little bit. 
Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, I do have a lot of HP. Don't get me wrong. But I don't think it's enough to deal with this thing. Uh, I think my play here is going to be to assume that they're going to go ahead and just drain and kiss and go for a max airstream. I'm going to max guard first. And I'm going to spirit break this Eveltal for damage. And then, if I'm able to keep my <laughs> my Grim Snarl, I'm going to try to go on the offense with the Dynamax Surfetched. This is no longer about winning, it's about sending a message. Because bringing Surfetched was a horrible idea. But most Eveltal are special attackers, and I would assume they would just max airstream into the Surfetched. I'm thinking at plus one, if I'm behind a light screen, I should be fine to max airstream into them. Since I'm going to be reducing their special attack by one stage. And if they aren't going for a draining kiss, I might have just completely messed up and given them their weakness policy. Alright, now this Surfetched has a lot of speed investment and a lot of attack investment, which is to say, its HP and special defense have not been invested in very much. As they... Excuse me? Uh, excuse me? Okay, um... Interesting. I really didn't think they would do that there. And I probably just activated their weakness policy. Oh god. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Guys. 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 You think we can take this? <laughs> I mean, it's only plus one, right? Let me light screen. I can't... Unfortunately, I can't go for a Thunder Wave on the Eveltal. Because it's Dark type and immune. So stop commenting that. I know someone must have commented that at some point. <clears throat> Whenever... <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm very congested this morning. Whenever I use a Grim Snarl, someone's like, yeah, you should have just Thunder Wave there. And I'm like, it was a Dark type. I couldn't. And they're like, why? And I'm like, that, that, that's how it works. Because that's how it works. <laughs> All right, Sir Fetched, I hope you can take this. Oh. Okay. No, no, we're good. We're good. I just have to crit this, you know. Easy, easy, just crit. It's a very easy crit to land. If that was a crit, I'm going to be very upset. I'm going to be extremely upset if that was the crit. Okay. Um, what are my options here? I could max guard. And get in my grout on. And that wouldn't be the worst. <laughs> Let's just do that. Assuming they're going to drain and kiss. I, have, I threw this game turn one. I'm just going to point that out there. I threw this game by Dynamaxing. The stupid surf etched. We're going to have to crit a close combat. And hope that they just somehow lose all notice that there's a surf etched on the field that is a free KO and just decide to target Groudon. And I'm assuming they would just max airstream here and go for a draining kiss. Yep. That shouldn't do too much. Okay, well they just ignored the surfetched entirely and I feel like an idiot. Um, how well do we take a plus one oblivion wing behind screens? Not well, I would assume. Once again, I am requesting that this Eveltal player ignore the Surfetched. Come on, Surfetched, you're at full health. You can take this. You can take this, bud. It's only plus one. And your special defense is questionable. But you can take this, bud. <laughs> There's the draining kiss into the... Okay. 
Maybe they're just going for the Groudon KO? I am ashamed. I am ashamed that I let off this way. I'm just going to put that out there. This is shameful. Okay, uh, time to click the very strong Pokemon button. I'm just going to Heat Wave. Luckily, Charizard's absurdly strong. Uh, let me protect and Heat Wave here. I could Blast Burn too, just to make sure I get rid of the Evelatol, but that's 100% not my play. That is 100% not my play, dude. There's the Oblivion Wing. It's going to hurt. So, interestingly enough, the Comfy is going to go after the Evolatol, which means it didn't click a healing move. Did it Trick Room? I would be fine with that. That made no sense. You have a speed... Okay. No. All right. I'm fine. We're going we're gonna to take it. We're going to take it. That's fine. They're giving it. They're giving us this game. Unless there's like a Pokemon in the back that really takes advantage of Trick Room that I'm just not respecting right now, they might have misplayed really hard there. Yeah, there isn't much. There isn't much that they have here. Uh, let me go ahead and I'm gonna do something really risky, and I'm just gonna Swords Dance at my Groudon here. I just have to connect two Heat Waves. And then I have a lot of offensive pressure. If if they somehow just gave me my win condition, I'm going to be really happy. <laughs> no! Are you kidding? What? Okay. I'm sad. This is the greatest tragedy any Pokemon player has ever experienced. The opponent completely throwing on top of your throw. Here's so here's here's a summary of this game. I threw turn one, and then they threw turn six, and then I had an opportunity to win and uh, missed a double heat wave. That's whatever, you know. I went into this match fully expecting Surfetch to be useless, but I wanted to try anyways because it was like it's on the team, you know. Anyways, that's gonna be it for today's video. <laughs> you guys might be like, this video sucked, and I'm like, kinda, a little bit. No, I'm joking. We'll do one more. We'll do one more. I have time for one more. Maybe this time Surfetch should be useless. And if it isn't useful, it's, it's just going to be whatever, you know? It's going to be whatever. We're just going to go with it. Our rating is so bad. I want it to be Series 7 already. Alright. As we're facing a Zacian Sun team, um, actually a pretty decent matchup for Charizard in particular. I think I just lead off Charizard Grimmsnarl, I'll bring Groudon in the back. And am I willing to hurt myself again? Am I willing to hurt myself again with Surfetched? Venusaur's right there, man. You just gotta click it. You just have to. Marcus, you just have to click the Venusaur. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to. <clears throat> I have to. It's, it's, it's surfetched, man. It's like my top 10 favorite Pokemon. I understand that it does nothing in this matchup, but maybe, maybe I'll be able to pull off something, you know? Maybe if I Thunder Wave that Zacian, surfetch cannot speed it and get a crit close combat. Like, that could be cool. Maybe. Safety Goggles Charizard just completely carries anyways. Alright. So they off Zapdos Grimmsnarl. So the issue here is we're both base 100 speed Pokemon. 
So this is a speed tie. Uh, what I could do is just get off a light screen and go hard into my Groudon. Whoop. Light screen, or I could even... I could technically Spirit Break here and then get off a light screen just as fast. I'm, I'm just going to Spirit Break here and hope that they went for a Max Lightning. So the reason I'm Spirit Breaking first is because I feel like they always Dynamax the Zapdos here. And in order to ensure a KO, they would really, really want to go for this Max Lightning. There it is. Granted, they could just go for a fake Tears Max Airstream, but I don't know. Alright, there's their light screen. Did they lightning or airstream? Please be lightning. Awesome. Awesome, man. So, now I get a Spirit Break off. Lowering their special attack. And I get to go for my light screen now. Oh, no. Okay, well, that's a little bit unfortunate. Um, They're going to max Airstream now, for sure. I'm just going to Protect. Uh, and I'm going to go for a... You're going to think I'm crazy. I'm just going to Spirit Break again. I'm going to do it. I'm going to Spirit Break again and go for a Protect. Because they should max Airstream here. I don't think they're going to target down the Grimmsnarl at all. There's the Reflect. Basically, I just very much like to neuter their Dynamax option. That does, like, nothing. Awesome. So if I connect the Spirit Break and get off a light screen next turn, that'd be just a really, really solid position. I get the second Spirit Break off, so Zapdos is doing no type of damage. And I could even, I could even Swords Dance here pretty freely and get off my light screen. And as long as both of these two things happen, I'm good. I'm good, you know? I would assume Zapdos just airstreams again, uh, and if I get my light screen off, it's just not doing any damage to this thing. They withdraw the Grim Snarl, send out the Incineroar. I'm White Herb, so whatever. Nice. Please, 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 light screen. Awesome. So effectively, this is the type of damage that a resisted max airstream would do through a, through a light screen, you know? Because it's at minus two. Um, I feel pretty comfortable just max quaking into the incineroar. But this also comes down to whether or not my Grimmsnarl gets fully paralyzed versus the um, versus the incoming Zacian. Because I definitely want to be able to Thunder Wave that thing and outspeed it. Regardless, uh, they have no safe switch into this Max Quake. Everything just drops. And I could just set up a Reflect now. Make sure that Incineroar isn't going to be doing too much damage. Uh, but also make sure that I can tank that Behemoth Blade despite my drop in health since the beginning of the game. Because I believe Behemoth Blade does like 60 maximum to this guy. There's the Grim Snarl. Zapdos switching out first means that Incineroar stayed in. Likely went for a fake out onto the Grim Snarl, if not just a parting shot onto my Incineroar. And I think they only really live this of their Sugar Berry. Which I have seen some Sugar Berry Incineroar, but I really hope I'm not facing one right now. All right, cool. They uh, parting shotted, and they outsped me. 
That's annoying. Uh, Zapdos is going to come in right now. There is no way it's not Zapdos. Hmm. I mean, the Max Flare isn't a terrible option just to get rid of Zapdos, because I'm mostly concerned with Zapdos at this point in the game. I'm going to reflect again. Um, just because Zapdos is their most reliable check to Charizard. I forgot that they had a speed boost on the Incineroar, so that was kind of unfortunate for me. <laughs> they did, right? Because they Max Airstreamed. Yeah. I forgot the Incineroar had a speed boost there. If they do just double out into the Incineroar, it's whatever, you know? Yeah. At least I get some damage on it. I wasn't willing to quake into that thing. Let's get my Reflect off. And get like no damage. So they go for the spirit break. Does a solid chunk. Luckily they don't have a speed boost now. So I can just quake into this Grim Snarl, assuming that they're just gonna parting shot. Or just hard switch out. I'll quake the Grim. Uh, and I'll just go for a spirit break into the Incineroar, assuming that it's just gonna be Zapdos coming in here. If they're big brain and just go for, <laughs> and they go for uh, Zapdos into Grim Snar, I'm gonna kind of lose it, you know, just just kind of lose it, just a little bit. As they stay in, just gonna go for a parting shot, I guess. Dang, that, meant, that means I could have actually taken the Incineroar this turn. Actually, probably not. Not with the Reflect up and me being at neutral. So they go for the Spirit Break. And a Flare Blitz. Okay, that's fine. So here I'm going to get in my Surf Etched. And the reason I'm getting in Surfetch to not Charizard is because I'd much rather have Surfetch to get fully paralyzed than the Charizard. <laughs> or not fully, but, you know, paralyzed at all. And I feel like it's a pretty safe assumption that the Incineroar is going to want to get out of here. I'm going to Swords Dance. No, I'm not. I'm going to Fire Punch. I can close combat that Grim Snarl, right? Yeah, I'm just going to Fire Punch. And... Yeah, I'll close combat. Or It's definitely within Leaf Blade range. We'll just do that. Because I'm going to crit. There's no way the Incineroar stays in here. They stayed in. I don't know why they would stay in. I really don't. That made no sense to me. There's the taunt. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. No swords dances for me, I guess. And there's the Zapdos. Now, Zapdos, sometimes they carry Hurricane, sometimes they carry Heat Wave. Or not Heat Wave. They do carry Heat Wave, but sometimes they... No, they have to carry Hurricane. They definitely do. What I think I want to do here is go into Charizard and, and detect here. Because by going into Charizard, what I can do is I can set up the sun and lower their chances of actually getting that off. Since Hurricane's accuracy goes down to 50. Um, and then I can just Heat Wave and hope I outspeed this thing. There's the detect. Okay. Here's my detect. 
And there's their Flare Blitz. Into my Zard, shouldn't do too much. Alright, let's see. I'm timid. I really hope this works out. I could Blast Burn the Zapdos right now and probably win. I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just gonna Blast Burn the Zapdos. If I win the Speed Tie, I win. Because I take the Incineroar with me. Yes! Okay, that's going down. And I outspeed the, the Incineroar now, right? I outspeed the Incineroar. I get my close combat off. Get rid of that. And finally, finally Surfetched is doing things. And he also I also got to click Detect, which is really cool for the thumbnail. So, <laughs> okay. Um, it's pretty clear that here they would just go ahead and uh, get in the Zacian to try to KO the Surfetched while the... Well, the Charizard is slightly incapacitated. So I'm going to detect here. They could also just try to get rid of the Charizard, but I really want Surfetch to do something. So I'm going to detect. I think regardless, as long as I can get a P-Blades off with my Groudon, I'm fine. And they'd have to be like Wild Charges Aishi in the KO here. As they protect, interestingly enough... And my light screen wears off. Cool. Uh, I'm going to blast burn them. And I'm going to go for this uh, close combat. I almost hope that they knock out the Charizard so I can close combat the Zacian. Oh, that's fine. I just have to crit a close combat. That's fine. Check it out. 50% chance to win right here. 50% chance. Uh, oh no, come on. That's no fun. Anyways, my play is always just to attack now. So they go for the Behemoth Blade, that's definitely into the Surfetched. Or I guess I could have just protected there. I don't know why I said my play is always to, or always to attack. Um, here, I just have to go for a Fire Punch. And I have to not miss a move with my Charizard. Which makes me uncomfortable, because my moves can miss. Okay, what's more accurate? Blast Burn, I believe, is the same accuracy as Heat Wave, 90... 90. Might as well go out with a bang, you know? Or a burn. And I fire punch. They go for the protect. That's fine. It doesn't affect blast burn at all. I don't know why they would protect there. I guess maybe just to get Charizard into range of a Behemoth Blade. But they should never target Charizard first. They should always bank on the, on the miss. Blast burn. Fire punch. There's only a 10% chance I lose this game. There's the Behemoth Blade. I kind of hope it's into Charizard just to make sure I don't have to worry about that. Nah, it's in the Groudon. I don't tank it. Come on, Charizard. You got this. There we go. Okay, cool. So we get the KO there, and that's going to be it for the video. Uh, I did manage to pick up two wins. One of the games, Surfetch managed to do something, which is all I wanted to accomplish today. Surfetch is pretty, eh, you know? Uh, but I did manage to pull something off of them. But yeah, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate your continued viewership. Do me a favor, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, subscribe right now. Leave a like on the video, turn on notifications, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.